Hi, my name is Mary. Today FM plays the best music in Lambasa. Today FM rocks. My name is Thomas. I'm here in Nakasi and I like to listen to Today FM because it's rocks. And my name is Milinia. Today FM rocks here in Singatoka. My name is Alkriki and Today FM rocks here in Tawa. My name is Mary Jane. I love listening to Today FM here in Bath. Today FM rocks. My name is Ilay Tiambal and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks here in Osur. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, PM again lashes out at NFP and Sidelpa. FDB gets huge support in climate fight. And Randrandra and Tuisova may cut for London Sevens. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spade. Prime Minister of Warenge Mbaini Marama has lashed out at his opposition rivals for their critiques to belittle the achievements of the government. Mbaini Marama says the commissioning of Fiji's first floating vessel, MLC Vevuepi, is another historic milestone and a first for Fiji under his leadership. However, they will always receive criticism. He says the continuous negativity from the so-called old politicians was not doing anything positive for Fiji. Akusita Thale reports. The Prime Minister claims Sodelpa and NFP are not guided by realism and driven by principle but are driven by desperate attempts to remain relevant in an economy where all their accusations and critiques have been proven wrong. They now resort to one strategy and one strategy alone. Throw whatever they can at the wall and see what sticks. Unfortunately for them, nothing is sticking. The Fijian people know better. Banimarama says he has proven the ability to steer through choppy waters and stay on course to arrive at a more prosperous future after fulfilling all their promises to Fijians. The current head of Sotopa has been at the helm of the ship before and he quickly sank it to the bottom of the Pacific. The current head of NAP has never steered a ship and does not that they have the capacity to do so. However, National Federation Party leader Biman Prasad says he's disappointed at the Prime Minister for using an official function to attack other political party leaders. Obviously, the NFP uh, is not going to uh, play politics. Uh, we are campaigning on issues. We are campaigning on uh, facts and figures. Calls made and questions sent to Sodalpa leader Sitiveni Rambuka and party secretary Andiliti Angioni Baravi for a response remain unanswered. Akusita Talei, FBC News. The Fiji Development Bank will soon have access to international funding for projects that can make communities more resilient to natural disasters. This is after FDB formalized a shared commitment with the United States Agency for International Development to help the bank gain accreditation with Green Climate Fund. Kelly Vavala reports. USA Today signed an agreement with the Fiji Development Bank for its READY project to assist the bank with its accreditation requirements with the Green Climate Fund. Um, it's very important for the United States here to continue to support a disaster resilient community across the Pacific. Um, this is a community that can support the life and livelihoods of its own people. This is USAID READY's first technical support in Fiji and something they're very happy to be a part of and they're hoping to continue to work with the FDB to help formulate projects and proposals when full accreditation is received. Accreditation conditions. Um, first, is, first is the gender equity and social inclusion policy and a procurement policy. FDB Chief Executive Mark Loft says this will help them prioritize areas of technical support and implement policies that achieve national adaptation and mitigation outcomes shows that the international community and USAID clearly recognises the importance of climate change adaptation and mitigation uh, and the role of the GCF in the future of Fiji, maybe not just the future but also the survival of Fiji. The GCF is a financial mechanism under the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change which aims to support projects, programs, policies and other activities in developing countries. Kelly Vavala, FBC News. Final outcomes from the Rewa Provincial Council meeting are focused on education, employment and investment opportunities for the people of Rewa. 
After two days of deliberations, Ithao K Affairs Permanent Secretary Naipote Katuni Tambua says discussions were mainly on the way forward for the province. Katuni Tambua says issues pertaining to the running of the province of Rewa were dealt with accordingly, and the council is embarking on developing new initiatives. With over 54 villages in Rewa, the Itao K Affairs is happy with the input made by the Maramambale Rokutu Inriketi Rote Mumukepa. Something that uh, quite uh, peculiar about uh, the last two days meeting is that uh, the initiative. Eh? First is the, the vision and the initiative that uh, the Marama Rokutu Inriketi wants Rewa to be. And uh, secondly is the committee that works to implement uh, those initiatives. Eh? In a bid to boost Fiji's micro, small, medium enterprises, the government of India gave Fiji a $1.7 million assistance last night. This is part of the $5 million vow which was made by Prime Minister Narendra Modi to Fiji during his 2014 trip to the country. India's High Commissioner to Fiji, Vishva Sapkal, says the Indian government has already dispersed over $4 million, which has been distributed to 4,752 Fijians as a grant. While receiving the check from India's Minister of State for Health and Family Welfare, Ashwini Chobe, Attorney General Aya Said Kayum thanked the Indian government and its people for this assistance. As we have seen in India, as we are seeing in Fiji today, it's the ordinary Fijians, it's the ordinary Indians that we need to assist in the day-to-day -day basic living. And this micro-finance um, assistance that we've given has tremendously changed the lives of literally thousands of Fijians in a small but very decisive manner. Still to come, Bulitavu and Karuna Ratne file appeal against their conviction and sentence. And Vevoeti added to government shipping services fleet. Stay with us. Bula, never go Malaka Leloma, go in Nakas, on the Wagarong and Bula Fip, Nabondo and a Seri. Oya was it says, Lambasa, and the Teletan of Rome and Bula Fem, Nabondo and Seri. We have the Tumeli, a Kuana Town of Hinatoka, Teletakina of Rome and Bula Fem, Nabondo and a Seri. Former opposition MP Moses Mbulitavo and businessman Jagat Karuna Ratne have appealed against their conviction and sentence. Mbulitavo and Karuna Ratne, who were sentenced for sedition in April, appeared before the High Court today. Pranita Prakash reports. 35-year-old Moses M. Bulitavu and 50-year-old Jagat Karuna Ratne were handed down custodial sentences by the Suva Magistrates Court in April. Bulitavu's lawyer, Barbara Mali Mali, is expected to file 18 grounds of appeal. She says her grounds of appeal will mostly be on the law. Mali Mali informed the court today that this is a timely appeal because they are anticipating the writ of elections to be issued between July and August. According to Mali Mali, the magistrate had erred in law when she failed to identify the elements of the offence of sedition. Karuna Ratne's lawyer, Filimoni Vosarongo, says he will rely on the court records. Bulitabu was sentenced to two years, five months and 13 days imprisonment, while Karuna Ratne was sentenced to two years, five months and 16 days imprisonment by the magistrate's court after they were convicted of one count of each of sedition. Bulitabu, together with former businessman Karuna Ratne, spray painted words in different places between Nosori and Suva with the seditious intention of bringing hatred or contempt or to excite disaffection against the government. The matter has been adjourned to June 13th to follow up on the court records. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. The Vevoethi is the fifth addition to the government shipping services fleet and is Fiji's first floating hospital specifically designed to be a mobile medical facility for our islands. Commissioning the vessel yesterday, Prime Minister Vurenge Mbani Marama says this addition is a testament to the modernization and growth of the country. Maggie Boyle was on board the ship and filed this report. 
aptly named Vevueti in Itoke means to help someone in a time of need. It will house separate groups for operations, minor procedures, consultations, and recovery. It is uh, speci uh, specially equipped design to accommodate 18 crew members, including a full team of medical professionals who can carry out emergency surgeries. With the capacity to hold and provide 200 tonnes of supplies to an area in need or up to 300 tonnes of clean water to a drought-stricken island, the vessel will be in demand. The ship is equipped with state-of-the-art tools like uh, ventilator machines and medical lasers to treat serious eye complications. MLC Rebueti can be quickly deployed to arrive and host an emergency procedure. And the government fleet is expected to increase yet again in 2019. We are going to buy an additional ship every, every year since uh, the past uh, four or five years. So this is uh, the reality on the ground. Eh? She's Fiji's first floating hospital. The Vevueti has been booked for the next 10 weeks to carry out essential medical clinics in the maritime zones. At the heart of this vessel, the vision is that she will assist more than 10,000 Fijians annually and, of course, in the event of natural disasters, be able to provide rapid medical maritime response. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. More than 100 models will showcase the designs of 23 local designers at the Bottega Gold Fijian Fashion Festival at the Grand Pacific Hotel in Suva tonight. Fashion Council of Fiji Chair Faraz Ali says the festival is a celebration of our uniqueness of being Pacific Islanders. Ali says the future of and revolution of fashion in the Pacific and Fiji is here. He says our history and the way we dress is very important as it gives us our identity. He says through the festival, the council plans to celebrate our identity and who we are through fashion. We have a whole bunch of young people now who are so aware um, of what is happening globally, but they're still so proud to be uh, from where they're from. They're proud to be from the Pacific and from Oceania. They're proud to have that identity to carry it. In an effort to address the labor issues faced by the sugar industry, the government has rolled out a scheme to allow farmers to buy tractors under cooperatives. Permanent Secretary for Sugar Yogesh Karan says Prime Minister Vurengi Mbani Marama last year rolled out an incentive where the government funded 21 cooperatives with $2 million for mechanical harvesters. Karan says together with this, the government also allocated close to $2 million for farm implements. He says there are more than 40 harvesters under the cooperatives to date. We have to move away from manual farming to uh, mechanized farming. Uh, the issue that the labor costs are high and farmers, if you talk to every farmer, the issue is labor. In sports later with Melly, he'll have all the latest on our Sevens Rugby Gladiators. But up next is Rachel with Business. Thanks, Jackie. Good evening and coming up in Business Tonight. Fiji Airways launches new app. And in growing Fiji, shipping services gets a new office. Stay with us. Lola, I am Eleanor. For the best classic kids, I only listen to Gold FM here in Singapore. Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Seni Rawa. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osuri, Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Dino. I'm from Africa, Coral Coast, Singatoka. I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Salote. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osuri, Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, my name is Marida. Gold FM plays the best classics here in Altiga, Singatoka. Gold FM, only the classic hits. In business tonight, Fiji Airways has launched its mobile travel app, enabling guests to manage their journey with ease through their mobile phones. The app, which is available for free on download on Apple and Android, is part of the airline's ongoing initiative to enhance customer experience. Guests can use the app to book a flight, check flight status, manage trips, check in online, 
select seats and receive push travel notifications such as check-in reminders, flight delays and cancellations and departure gate details. It also has an information hub with details such as the airline's baggage policy, allowance and fees, special assistance, dangerous goods and contact information. The app is available on App, well, rather app Store and Google Play Store. In a bit to ease the process of doing business and trade, the Fiji Revenue and Customs Service launched the piloted Fiji Authorized Economic Operator Program in Suva today. Chief Executive Vishwanath thus says the AEO program will provide members international recognition of their commitment for secure trade. Thus says the high trade volume makes it difficult for customs admin to examine and verify each and every package going in and out of the country. He adds, through this platform, guidelines and procedures ensure the security and safety of the country or the region. The AEO program will officially be launched on the 25th of January 2019. Uh, it is that is benefits from the following uh, measures to expedite cargo release with minimum intervention at the border and lower costs, providing access to information and continuous collaboration to value our AEO participants, special measures relating to periods of trade disruption or elevated threat levels, priority consideration for participation in any cargo processing programs. And Sharon is here now with the latest on the money market. The geopolitical events and economic data from the U.S. and Euro took the center stage in the foreign exchange market today. U.S. President Donald Trump said he is imposing steel and aluminium trade tariffs from the European Union, Canada and Mexico. The tariffs will be set at 25% on steel, while aluminium will be at 10% effective from Friday their time. The markets reacted negatively to the news as the main U.S. stock indices ended the day in red. Meanwhile, data released by the U.S. this morning showed upbeat personal spending and declined jobless claims. On the economic front, while the Eurozone's economy has been slowing down from strong growth last year, consumer price data published yesterday showed inflation jumped to 1.9% against the 1.6% forecast. And remember, our Fiji dollar is pegged to a basket of currencies, two of which are U.S. and Euro, and any movement in these two currencies does correlate to the value of our Fiji dollar. That's all for this week. Pinaka. Thanks for the update, Sharon. Taking a look at today's currency exchange rates set this morning for the Fijian dollar. Yet another mixed day for our dollar, dropping against the Chinese yuan, the Kiwi dollar, and together with the euro and the Japanese yen. As for the commodities market, oil prices dropped to 66.94 a barrel, gold dropped to 1,298 an ounce, and silver was down as well to close at 16.39 an ounce. And in growing Fiji tonight, the Department of Government Shipping Services officially received a new home yesterday with the newly constructed office and warehouse building. Prime Minister Varangi Banimarama was on hand last night to open the premises, which is an upgrade to the previous structure, which was built in 1982 and had deteriorated to a state where equipment and cargo could not be safely stored. The new warehouse will be particularly useful for those Fijians from the islands that wish to store some items or vice versa. At a total cost of $3.6 million, this new facility is evidence of my government's uh, continued commitment to investing in Fiji's infrastructure and to markedly improving the workplace conditions of all government employees. And that's it from business for tonight. Melly joins you now with sports. Unaka Rachel. Just before we go on to sports tonight from the news production team and I, we would like to wish our news presenter Jackie Spade a very happy birthday. Up ahead in sports, we saw the end of Randa in for London Sevens. And Nandi eyes to shuttle Lambasa in the semi-final. This and more coming up.
Hi, I'm Jyotishma. I'm from Singatoka. I love listening to Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM is hot. Singatoka Mirchi FM is number one. I'm Charlene Robert. Mirchi FM rocks in Lombasa. I'm Swana Min. I'm Sodi Jackson. Mirchi FM is hot. My name is Raymond Dutt. I'm in Baba Singh Alliance. Mirchi FM is hot in Lombasa. I'm Kritika from Jackson, Missouri. I love listening to Mirchi FM here in Missouri. Mirchi FM is hot. Mirchi FM, it's hot. Fiji Airways Men's Sevens coach Gareth Baber has named Chosuoti Sowa and Semiran Randra in the final 12 member squad for the London tournament. Randra has been named in the forwards together with Sevuloni Mwadinadhangi, Chosuoti Kurnambili, Kalioni Nasoko, Chasavere Maloa and Paulandrani Sinukula. Baber has dropped Mesulame Kunubula, Apinisa the Kaumbalabu and Samisoni Birviri. He has opted for six backs led by skipper Jerry Tuai while Alessio Nandova is the 13th player and will be on standby for the London Sevens. After having missed out on playing for the Fine Fijians last year due to injury, France-based utility back Sevona Yengalala hopes to finally make his bow for the Flying Fijians in test match against Samoa next weekend. Coach John McKee has high hopes of Ngalala and believes he will live up to the expectations in the media tests. Vasnil Prasad reports. Soaking up the atmosphere of being in a national team, 25-year-old Sevane Yangalala is ready to make his debut in front of the local crowd next Saturday. I'm really fortunate to be called in for the Flying Fijians training squad for the June test this year. And I thank the Lord and all who helped me to become who I am today. The former Fiji under-20 rep is living his dream, being together with flying Fijian stars like Kini Morimorivalu, Kempesi Mafu, Ben Volavola and Domenico Wanganimborotu. I'm really happy to be among these experienced players. I'll try my best to learn from them and they have been very helpful at training. Galala's brief teammate, Benny Tomasilevu, has spoken highly about him. He's one of the biggest players that's been coming up for Fiji rugby. It is, it's, it's fortunate enough he chose to play Fiji. Coach John McKee has been impressed with the Nandi native. He's shown great form for Breev in the, in the second half of the season and, and you know he certainly deserves his, his call up for this and I expect to, to some big things of him across the June series. Galala and the Flying Fijians 28 journey begins next Saturday at 3.30 p.m. against Samoa at ANZ Stadium in Suva. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. Fiji's pool opponent and London Sevens defending champions Scotland are oozing with the confidence of better, better outing this weekend. Despite losing three key players for the Fiji FAC semi-final this weekend, the Nandi football side has promised to provide a tough clash against Lambasa. The Jet Setters lost its number one striker, Rusiate Materirenga, Napoleon Ngasi Bakatin and Afraz Ali over the weekend during their pool matches and coach Bob's Khan says this hasn't deterred their preparation. Losing the three key players is a win-win situation for others in the squad to step up. It's just we have boys. We have boys that will fill the gap and uh, when we'll give Lambas a good run for the money. We have some uh, under 20 guys that uh, will need to raise their hands now and they can't be sitting on the bench all the time and uh, this is the time for them to show what uh, they can do for Nandi. Coach Bob Khan has thrown his challenge to the Bamba Singh Alliance who remains undefeated from its pool matches last weekend. Finishing, as you can see our games, uh, we did not play any league games prior to the tournament. Uh, so what happened was, uh, as we went to the tournament, as we played games, we went better and better and better. So we went one up. So maybe our fourth game this week, maybe we give Lombas a real tough time. Captain Veretti Dixon says they are aware of the challenge ahead and are preparing according to it. I hope uh, that they're going to do better this year and one step up. As you know that we lost uh, against Rewa last year. I think we're going to do our best to win this year. Nandi takes on Lambasa at 1 p.m. Sunday, while at 3 p.m. Lotoka meets Rewa. Both matches will be played at Lotoka's Churchill Park. Jonathan Thurston and Jason Taumalolo have used their perfect combination of poison power to lift North Queensland to a 26-12 win over the Manly Sea Eagles last night. The pair were both outstanding after Thurston took the spoils in his head-to-head -head battle with Daly Cherry Evans, while Taumalolo made 234 meters from 35 runs as he gave the Manly defenders nightmares.
Chelsea's Russian billionaire owner Roman Abramovich has put the club's stadium plans on hold after delays to the renewal of his UK visa. Abramovich is unwilling to invest in a major project in a country where he is not allowed to work. In today's play of the day, a while Canada Goose settled into right center field during a rain delay of the U.S. Detroit Tigers baseball game. And in an attempt to remove, it ended in chaos. The grounds crew at the park in Detroit set off two firecrackers and another member gave chase. The bird tried to escape but crashed into an lead board on the third deck and fell to levels into the stands. And that's it from Sports Tonight. Angie joins you later on with weather. And in the world of the weird and the wonderful, we will tell you how to save yourself from an attack Chinese style. Find out more after the break. Radio Fiji One in Atoka. Radio Fiji One, non domo eviti. In new media, the Moto G6 Plus is the flagship phone of the company's new trio, also including the G6 and the G6 Play. And it's weather time now with Angie. to you and to the weekend. I'm so glad it's Friday and I know you are too. Well, even though the conditions are not too well in favor, but who says we can't have fun. Taking a look in the west, it was all wet with more rainy spells in store. Eastwards from Back Harbor to Suva, another rainy and gloomy one. And up north, a cool and a wet one as well. Heavy showers are in prediction for tonight into early tomorrow morning. At sea, southeast winds gusting to 25 knots with rough seas. For the tides, low tide at 1.15 a.m. with high tide at 7.46 a.m. Sunrise at 6.31. For tomorrow, I guess it's better off for sleepings as there is showers in the forecast. Tomorrow's temps, all centers will be cool in the high 20s. And looking further on to Sunday, it looks like another into a day as wet spells are likely. And it's back to the birthday girl. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fijian Pulse tonight, we asked, is Akapu Singera the best flying Fijian skipper we have had in recent time? He's the best captain in our team in Fiji. I believe so because he's the most experienced and uh, I believe he can also deliver if given uh, another chance to captain the flying Fiji. Yes, he is the best captain ever. This is the best ever Fijian captain I've uh, come across uh, due to uh, the Flying Fijian's performance. In the world of the weird and the wonderful, a 10 second video published by Public Security Bureau has gone viral on Chinese social media. Recapping the main stories for tonight, PM again lashes out at NFP and Sidelpa. FDB gets huge support in climate fight, and Randrandra and Tuisova make cut for London Sevens. Now for these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question segment this week, we're asking, will you be watching the Highlanders versus Chiefs Super Rugby match in Suva on June 30th? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, our shot of the day is from Voase Naivalu. He decided to capture this early this morning while on a shift at the fire rescue Nandi Airport. Can't wait to have some fine weather in Suva. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at fbc underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight. From the team and I, have a safe and enjoyable weekend. Bye for now.
मैं नवनीत नन नंबालुम बुआ से जैसे प्रेनी नोट मशहूर है वैसे रेडियो फिजी टू भी सभी जगह मशहूर है रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन सीमा नकाशी से मैं रेडियो फिजी टू पसंद करती हूँ सुनने के लिए रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन मैं हूँ अंकल किंग सिंगर टोकर टाउन के टैक्सी ड्राइवर देशी रग्बी फेम में से वैसे रेडियो फिजी टू फेम में से रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन